Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my complete Yao Yao guide. Yao Yao is the newest four star character that we got in patch 3.4, who is our first Dendro healer. She is a Dendro support who can heal your team, apply Dendro, and proc reactions, making her a very useful four star support. And so, in today's video, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about Yao Yao regarding how to build and play her efficiently, covering her best artifacts, weapons, teams, constellations, and more. Before we begin, however, I do want you guys to know that I stream both sites on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting things off, let's talk about Yao Yao's abilities and playstyle, break down how her it works and how you can get the most value out of it. Now, first things first, her elemental skill is going to be the core and central part of her kit. What this ability does is summon your Yugwe, a rabbit that sits on the field and will just periodically shoot radishes. The way this actually works is it'll shoot a radish every second and it will last for 10 seconds. What these radishes will do is explode on contact with either your character or an enemy and it will then explode and both deal damage, apply dendro, and also heal the characters within the AoE, which means that you can effectively heal your active character while also dealing damage or do one of the two depending on what you need. In fact, the way your Yugwe chooses what it's going to attack or heal is random. However, if your active character is under 70% HP, 70% HP or less, it will throw a Radish prioritizing healing your active character. If your character, however, is healthy, 70% HP or higher, then it will prioritize enemies over your character. Now, other things to note is that, first of all, if there aren't any enemies nearby, it will just heal you all the way to 100% HP. And on top of that, even if you're in combat and your character is healthy, let's say over 70% HP, while it will target enemies, if you're in melee range or close enough to the enemies, if you stay close to them, you will be able to deal damage to them while also healing your active character, even if you're above 70% HP, which means that this ability can basically do everything all at once, in the sense that it will deal dendro damage, which will apply dendro and enable dendro reactions, while also healing your active character. And another thing to note about this ability is that the scaling of the healing is on your HP, so if you want to maximize your healing, you'll go HP, whereas your damage scales on attack, and your reaction damage will typically scale on elemental mastery, so there are a few different ways to build her, but more on that a bit later in the video when we go into more detail on her builds. Furthermore, you also gain more healing with one of your passive talents, which also scales on HP. Now moving on, your elemental burst is going to basically transform your Yao Yao into an adeptal state, where she's going to want to stay on field for 5 seconds. In order to summon multiple of your Yugues, you can have basically multiple bunnies on field that will all shoot at enemies or party members, dealing dendro damage and healing. Inside of your burst, not only are your scalings better, so like the damage and healing of your radishes goes up, but on top of that, you will be healing every single party member at the same time when you are healing. This means that your burst will be much more efficient at healing your party members, whereas your elemental skill is just a passive source of healing, which can oftentimes be enough, but your burst is really where the healing kicks it up a notch. This adeptal legacy state lasts for 5 seconds, during which you can summon up to 3 Yugues, and you will also gain a movement speed increase and a dendro resistance increase as well, which can be relevant in certain teams like Bloom or Burgeon, where your own dendro reaction damage is going to be hitting you, because reactions like Bloom and Burgeon actually damage your active character if you stay next to the cores. If that wasn't enough, when you're inside of your burst, if you jump around or dash around, Yao Yao will be throwing white radishes at nearby enemies, which which means that you kind of always want to be moving, running or jumping when you're on your Yao Yao inside of your burst. And so with the basics out of the way, how does your kit actually work? Well, Yao Yao is a character who has two main playstyles, but generally speaking, you're going to be wanting to use her for her skill in most teams. The reason for this is because her elemental skill is a really good way of having a dendro apply on your team who can also heal. While the dendro application on her skill isn't amazing, it is enough for certain teams like Quicken to be able to Quicken, to be able to proc aggravate on your electro carry, which we'll cover more in the team section, while also fulfilling the healer role that would otherwise require you to run a more defensive support to be a healer on top of your dendro support. Now, with that said, her burst should generally be seen as a way to get fast healing whenever you need it to all of your party members. While I think most of her teams will utilize her skill primarily, you can use your burst whenever you need healing, so you can basically use it every other rotation, generally speaking. Now, with that said, there are some teams like, for example, a Nilu Bloom team, where you may want to prioritize being on field on your Yao Yao, using your burst, and running around for those five seconds every single rotation whenever you can. This is because it will apply more dendro, enable more blooms, and can be your on-field character for those 5 seconds, whereas in other teams it can be more difficult to basically have 5 seconds for you to swap into your Yao Yao, which is why many teams use her just for her skill. Alright, so next up I wanted to showcase how much Yao Yao actually heals. Well, Yao is a character who gets a lot of healing from her elemental burst, but also a decent amount from her skill, which I want to show off in this section. First of all, as you can see, on a full HP build Yao Yao, with level 8 talents, her skill is healing an okay amount of over 2000 when you factor in its hit, plus the passive that also will heal you when the white radish explode. Because of that, the skill is a decent source of passive healing while you're fighting enemies, making it more than enough as a healer role just passively from off field to fill that position. Now, where her healing really gets good though, and much better than just a little bit from her skill as you can see here, is with her elemental burst. Now, with Yao Yao's elemental burst, uh, here I'm using a team that is all like on really low HP, and when I use her burst and summon all the Yugues without even using my skill, which by the way, you can use your skill on top of the bunnies in your burst, they do heal a ton here and are healing 
all the party members on my team at the same time. As you can see, I basically fully healed all my characters except my Zhongli, who's on very high HP, uh, and then my skill can obviously do the rest. Now, to further demonstrate this, here's another clip of my Yao burst, pretty much full healing my party members, even the ones that are off field, by just using her burst, staying on field on her for a little bit. And as you can see, the three bunnies are fully healing my team, and I could have even used my elemental skill here if I wanted to, but I just wanted to showcase my burst. Before moving on, a few important properties, I guess a bit more advanced information that you should know are the following. First of all, regarding your dendro application of your elemental skill, is that throughout the duration of your skill, you can apply Dendro up to four times on a specific enemy while shooting 10 radishes and generating five particles. What is important to note is that while you won't be applying Dendro on every single hit because of the ICD of your Dendro application makes it to where not every hit will apply Dendro on a specific enemy, since Yao Yao's targeting is random and also can be AoE, this makes it to where you can apply more Dendro effectively against multiple targets as individual enemies all have their own separate internal cooldown. Because of that, against large groups of enemies, your Yao Yao will even be more efficient than in single target, which means that your Dendro application can be better than it seems. Before moving on, you should know that for your talent priority, your skill and your burst are both important to significantly increase how much you're healing, and so you could level both of these if you plan on using them both, and you can generally speaking prioritize your skill depending on how much you're using your burst. Alright, now moving on, how do you actually want to build your Yao Yao? Well, first things first, I need to make it very clear that she has a ton of different ways to be built, at least artifact stat-wise, depending on what team you want to use her in and what your actual goal is. If you want to heal as much as you can, if you want to deal the most reaction damage that you can, whatever your purpose is will determine how you want to build her. Because of that, we're going to cover all of that in this section right now, starting with your artifact stats, then moving on to sets, and then weapons. So starting with your artifact stats, what you actually want can vary depending on your team comp, with your general needs being as follows. For a generic Yao Yao healer build, you want to be prioritizing the following stats. HP or energy recharge on your sends, HP on your goblet, and then healing bonus, or HP on your circlet to maximize your healing, or crit rate if you're running the Favonius Lance, and want some crit rate to proc its effect, which we'll cover in the next section. Now in a quicken team, if you're focusing on your Yao Yao damage, then you would want to go for either Elemental Mastery or Attack on the Sands, with Elemental Mastery generally being better, especially as you'll be able to proc the spread reaction, and especially against multiple targets. For your Goblet, you're going to want Dendro Damage Bonus, and for your Circlet, you're going to want Crit, Rate, or Damage. Lastly, in a Nilu Bloom team, since your Yao Yao will be on field procking some of the Blooms herself, you need to first of all prioritize Energy Recharge to make sure you have enough to burst, and I'll cover the exact amounts in a second, but you will need to make sure you have enough Energy Recharge to use your burst when you're on field in a Nilu team, while also either maximizing EM to maximize your boom damage or maximizing HP to maximize your healing. What that means is that in a Nilu Bloom team, your sands can be either energy recharge, elemental mastery, or HP, your goblet can be either elemental mastery or HP, and your circlet can be either elemental mastery or HP or healing bonus. Personally, I think focusing on your reaction damage is a bit better, but if you're struggling with staying alive as you can take a lot of damage by getting self-bloomed, you can feel free to go with HP for a more supportive build, or you could also pair her with another healer like Kokomi who can also stack elemental mastery and help heal your team while proccing bloom as well. Now, I know that may have seemed confusing, but basically there's just so many different viable builds for your Yao Yao that you really want to pick based on your team and what works for you, what you're actually trying to achieve. Now with that said, how much energy recharge do you actually want on your Yao Yao? Well, first things first, you need to determine first of all how you're playing your Yao Yao and how often you plan on using your burst and also other factors that can greatly reduce how much energy recharge you need, like the support characters you're running and also if you have your second constellation, which we'll talk about later. Generally speaking though, the ranges you want are as following. First of all, if you plan on using your burst every other rotation, using her as a standard healer, primarily using your skill and then swapping, you can either mostly ignore energy recharge or just get enough from your weapon like a Favonius, or you can go for around 150 or so energy recharge, which is what you're typically going to need if you want to use your burst every other rotation, around 140 to 160 for a comfortable amount. With that said though, if you're using her primarily for her skill, you might not even have to focus on energy recharge at all if you really only want to use your burst when you absolutely need healing and don't need it up that often. With that said, while around 150 is good for a general range for using your burst every other rotation, if you're in a team where you need to use your burst as often as possible, you really want to use your burst every rotation, like for example in a Nilu Bloom team, you can need a lot more energy recharge, like anywhere from 200 to 250. The exact amount you need though will highly vary based on what supports you're running, like if you have Nahida or Favonius weapons and many other factors, so do test out what works for you, with the ranges that I mentioned being pretty general for most players. Alright, now with that out of the way, let's actually quickly talk about what artifact sets you want on Yayao, and this is honestly a lot more straightforward. Generally speaking, for most Dendro reaction teams, you want to go for the 4-piece Deepwood Memories. This is because when you're procking basically any dendro reaction, you want to make sure you have a deepwood user on your team to maximize your dendro damage or your dendro reaction damage. Because of that, Yao Yao is going to be the premier option to use the set, as whenever your elemental skill or burst will hit an opponent, you will decrease the dendro resistance of enemies by 30% for 8 seconds, and it can be triggered even from off field, which means that your little bunny, your Yugue, can constantly proc the deepwood memory set, making her a very efficient unit at supporting your team with this artifact set while also healing and applying dendro. Now, other sets that can work and can sometimes even be better are the tenacity of the 
Lilith set, first of all, in a team where you want attack percent and aren't really focused on your dendro damage. An example of this is an aggravate team with a hyper carry like Kaching or even Sino, and when you're not running any other dendro supports, then the attack percent buff that the Lilith set's 4 piece will give your entire party 20% attack when your skill hits an opponent, while also giving your Yao Yao 20% HP on the 2 piece for more healing, makes this sometimes the best option in, again, a team like an aggravate one, where your dendro damage is only coming from Yao Yao and isn't that relevant. Also, the 4 piece instructor, while it is a 4 star set, can be viable to give all your party members an elemental mastery buff in a reaction based team if you maybe already have a deep wood user or aren't focused on dendro reactions. Other more niche sets include any of the healing sets if you just want to maximize your healing, like Maidens, Clam, or mix and matching 2 pieces. Or for your personal damage, you can go Gilded Dreams to maximize your elemental mastery, which obviously can be the best for your personal damage, but isn't recommended, as I believe one of the main things that makes her a actually good and viable unit is being able to run a supportive artifact set like Deepwood, freeing up your other characters to run more offensive options. All right, now moving on, let's talk about what weapon you actually want to use on your Yao Yao. Now, while there are a lot of good supportive options that we'll cover, I want to start by saying that the Favonius Lance is generally speaking going to be your best weapon for most teams. The reason for this is because it gives you 30% energy recharge, which as we saw earlier, is needed on a lot of different Yao Yao builds. With that said, even if you don't need energy recharge and you don't plan on using her burst, its passive effect, which will generate elemental particles when you do proc a crit, with this effect actually getting better with refinement, but still being great at R1, makes it a really good supportive option even if your Yao Yao doesn't really need that much energy recharge, as you will be giving energy to your other party members, which may need it, and can therefore help alleviate their energy recharge needs, allowing them to build more offensive stats, giving you more damage overall. Because of that, I really like Favonius Lance, but I also think there's some other good options that are underrated and very viable. The first one is going to be the Moon Piercer, which is a free-to-play option that can sometimes be inconsistent, but is, in my opinion, very good when supporting attack scaling characters who are going to be carrying your team. In fact, what the Moon Piercer does is generate a leaf on the ground when you proc a reaction that will give the character that picks it up up to 32% attack if it's fully refined. This can therefore be a really good buff to your main DPS character if you want a supportive option other than Favonius, which you can get and refine for free from a blacksmith and can be a nice option, even if the leaf can be a bit inconsistent at times, as long as you are running a character on your team that can benefit from attack percent. Now, other than those generic supportive options, other weapons include, first of all, elemental mastery options if you want to proc reactions like Bloom. So in a Nilu Bloom team, you can go for an EM weapon if you don't want to go Favonius, like either the Katane Cross Spear, which is the best one overall, or the Dragon's Bane if you just want elemental mastery, but Katane Cross Spear is generally better as it will give you EM, but also a good passive that will give you energy, which just makes it better, generally speaking. Moving on, if all you care about is your healing or you want a weapon to help maximize your healing, you can go for the Black Tassel as it gives you just a lot of HP at level 90. Lastly, if you're trying to maximize your spread damage while the elemental mastery weapons I mentioned are viable, you can also go for basically any crit weapon at all. Like literally all of the crit weapons can work in a spread team. However, generally speaking, since her personal damage isn't as high as your other characters, I think it's more efficient to use a supportive weapon like Favonius or even Moon Piercer to buff your team's overall DPS than to give her an offensive weapon, although it can be viable if all you want to maximize is your Yao Yao's damage in a quickened team. All right, now moving on, let's talk about Yao Yao's best constellations. Now, while overall, I don't think she's a constellation dependent character at all, and I'm really happy that we have a functional four star character since the release of Sumeru. She does have some pretty nice constellations for certain teams, which means that the more copies you get of her, the better she can become. In fact, her first constellation will give Dendro damage bonus to your active character when your Jade Radishes explode, that can make it nice with certain Dendro characters, notably a Dendro carry like Al Hytham, while also restoring some stamina. Because of that this constellation is nice and comfy, it helps your Dendro carries, but it also can help characters that spam charge attacks, which can help with like a Kaching or just whoever you're using. Next up, your second constellation is a really good one for your energy recharge needs. Very, very nice to have, especially in a Nilu Bloom team where you're using your burst as often as possible, but also just in general, as it will give you a ton of energy when you do use your burst. You will gain three energy every 0.8 seconds when you're inside of your burst if a white jade radish explosion hits an opponent. This means that inside of your burst, you can proc this effect up to six times, so up to 18 energy, which is just really good as a second constellation. Your C3 and 5 increase your talent levels, which are nice for some bonus healing, but not needed. And your fourth constellation is a pretty good one overall, especially if you're procking reactions on your Yao Yao, as it will basically just give you 120 elemental mastery or up to 120 if you are stacking HP. Now, lastly, your sixth constellation is one that has a lot of effects that will buff your Yugwei significantly. In fact, every third radish that your Yugwei will throw will be a mega radish. So every time it shoots two normal ones, it'll shoot a mega one that will deal AoE dendro damage scaling on your attack while also healing based on your HP. Because of that, Yao Yao's C6 can give you more damage, more healing, and also potentially more dendro application with this mega radish that has a larger AoE than her standard ones, as well as obviously bigger scalings, making it just a nice constellation if you have it. Definitely not a needed one, but honestly, all of her constellations are nice. And I really do think this character, while she is good at C0, can get even better in terms of quality of life and usefulness with constellations, with my personal favorite being C2 if you plan on using your burst, C1 with 
the character like Alhytham, and C6 overall, although it can be hard to get this many. All right, next up for Yao Yao's teams, there's actually a lot of different teams for pretty much any Dendro reaction where Yao Yao can fit as a decent option. First of all, let's talk about Nilu Bloom teams, which I believe is one of the better teams for Yao Yao, where she can shine in a playstyle that lets her use her burst to apply Dendro as much as possible from on field while also healing your party and just being a nice slot in these teams. Now, for a Nilu team in particular, obviously you want Nilu. If not, I wouldn't really recommend playing Bloom. I would recommend Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, or Quicken teams that we'll cover next. But for Bloom teams in particular, you really want Yao Yao and Nilu, and then your other two slots are going to be another Dendro character and then another Hydro. What characters you're running, however, are variable. The other Dendro slot you're running can be pretty much any Dendro support. Nahida is the best one, but you can also use the Traveler or Kole with LG for the end. But generally speaking, Traveler is the standard option, and Nahida is better if you have Nahida, both of which being very good in this team with Yao Yao and Nilu. On top of that, something to note is that Bloom teams in particular will deal a lot of damage to your on-field character because of how many Blooms you're proccing and because the reaction does damage you when you're inside of its AoE. Because of that, having a healer on your team like Yao Yao can help you stay alive while you are blooming. On top of the fact that even if you run another healer like Kokomi, if your Kokomi's on full elemental mastery, she won't be healing a lot. And the same can be said with Yao Yao, who are having two of them can be nice, or you can run a more offensive Hydro option as well, and then run Yao Yao as your only healer, which also can work, but you may want to build a bit more HP just to make sure you're healthy and healing your team. Now, as we said, the Hydro slots can be so many different characters. It could be Kokomi, Yalan, Synchro, Offfield, Ayato, pretty much any Hydro support, you name it. And if you do choose to run someone like Kokomi, build them on full elemental mastery to maximize their bloom damage. Whereas if you use this more offensive option like Yalan or Synchro, then you can build your Yao Yao on full elemental mastery and have her proc the blooms from on field. Overall, there's many different options you can do, but typically it's two Dendros with two Hydros, testing out what works for you. An interesting thing to mention though is that Candice can actually work with Yao Yao. While it isn't really like the optimal team, I recommend these other teams more than the Candice one. If you want to run Candice, she can actually infuse your Yao Yao's attacks with Hydro and let her drive the team from on field a bit better, making it a viable option. Now, with that said, you can also run Yao Yao mainly for her skill in a Quicken team. Quicken teams, where you pair Yao Yao with Electro carries like Kaching, Sino, or Dendro carries like Alhaitham or even Sikhnadi, can actually work quite well with Yao Yao. The reason for this is because she can give you a decent amount of Dendro application from off field through her elemental skill. On top of that, it fills up the healer role, which means that the last slot in your team can be an offensive option instead of a defensive one. A lot of times, you're going to need to run another healer, someone like Kuki or Kokomi, which are good options, or you could even use a shield character like Zhongli, and you still can with Yao Yao, but it's not as needed anymore, even though he does give you resistance shred. But now instead, you can run an offensive anima option like Kazo or Sucros, who are honestly pretty broken characters and who can significantly buff how much electro damage your aggravate carry is dealing in a Quicken team comp. Because of that, that is sort of Yao Yao's niche role in a Quicken team, where yeah, she might not give you the most Dendro application, but it's enough to proc your aggravates and to allow you to run an offensive option like Kazo or Sucros. Now, with that said, your last slot can also be a character like Zhongli or another Dendro character or even another Electro. Like, there's a lot of different ways to play these teams, but having Yao Yao as a two in one healer and Dendro applier can help for some more flexible team comps. The same can be said for a spread carry like Alhaitham, where you don't need to worry about having a healer on your team once you use Yao Yao. For Hyper Bloom, it's pretty straightforward. You can use her on field while your off field supports are proccing the Hyper Bloom reactions with powerful burst supports like Synchro, Kuki, and then a flexible last slot of either like Kazua, Beto, Fischl, or so many others. Obviously, every slot here is very flexible. You just want to make sure you have a Hydro and Electro that can Hyper Bloom, so someone on Elemental Mastery like Kuki, or EM Raiden, using her for Elemental Skill, or even someone like Dory, Fischl, or even Yai if you spend more on-field time on her. You can run an offensive Anemo support at the end like Kazua, or even Sucrose, who can be your on-field sort of Hyper Bloomer as well, can swirl the seeds up together. And since she's building Elemental Mastery, it's honestly fine if she Hyper Blooms as well, and Yao Yao can work in this team for a decent amount of Dendro application while also being a healer. Lastly, regarding Burgeon, I do think these teams are quite nice for Yao Yao. While Burgeon isn't in the best spot meta-wise right now, I think Yao Yao does have her place in a Burgeon team, giving you a healer, which is very needed with the Burgeon reaction, as similarly to Bloom, it does damage you as well. Because of that, you can run a team like this one, where you're running any Hydro character. I like Ayato as an on-field option, but obviously any consistent form of Hydro can work, with a Pyro Burgeon procker, which is going to be Toma, generally speaking, who's going to stack full Elemental Mastery. After that, you want to run Yao Yao, as well as another Dendro support, usually because Yao Yao's Dendro application oftentimes isn't enough for a Burgeon team, especially because you can like proc Burning sometimes, and you just want more Dendro, so someone like Nahida, or even the main character can work quite nicely. And so overall, I do really like Yao Yao as a very functioning and useful Dendro healer that can fit many different team comps when you need just that, a Dendro healer. She's a functioning unit at C0, quite flexible, and a character who I like. I really hope this guide was helpful, and in case you're wondering, I'm not including a showcase because she is just like a healer, there's not that much to show off, but I did try to include as many clips as possible throughout the video so you could see her in action. Oh, and if all that wasn't enough, her little bunny thing is adorable, super cute, and also her talent, the last one, the exploration one, is the same as Sayu, which means you can collect crystal flies a lot easier without them flying away from you. For 
for all those reasons, I really like Yao Yao. I hope this guide was helpful. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.